Thank you for joining us for another edition of Devar Malchus Parshas Ki Teitze from the 14th of Elul 5751 from Lubavitcher Rebbe. We are on page 151. Here we go. The order of the weekly Torah reading is as follows. The place we stop on Shabbos and Shacharis, that is where we read at Mincha. How so? Let me read that again. The place where we stop on Shabbos and Shacharis, that is where we read at Mincha. How so? The first Shabbos we read in Shacharis, the Parshas of Bereshis. At Mincha we read Ela Todos Noah. Ten verses or more or so we continue throughout the year. And the reading of the two Parshas on one Shabbos emphasizes the connections between them. Now, explanation is necessary regarding the two Parshas we read this Shabbos. Parshas Ki Tzitzet. Tzitzet. Ki Tzitzet. The Parshas of Ki Tzitzet, read in Shacharis, and the Parshas of Ki Savo, read in Mincha, which are seemingly opposites. The name of the Parsha, which the name expresses the contents of the entire Parsha, Tzitzet, go out and savo come which going and coming are opposites as obvious and in the content of the beginning of the headline of the parshas when will you will go to war with your enemies and when you will come to land you will inherit and settle in it which going out to war and settling in land are different and opposite states for although the war is in a manner of and hashem your god will place him in your hands and you will capture his captives as the verse continues and concludes nevertheless it is still a state of lack of peace and tranquility, as emphasized also in the ruling of the Rambam. Once he gets involved in the fighting of the war, he should, he should rely on the hope of the Jewish people and risk his life and not think of his wife nor his children and divert his attention from everything to de dedicate himself to the war with all his heart and his soul. The complete opposite of the state of inheriting and settling in the land a man under his vine and under his fig tree to the extent of bringing Bekurim after conquering and dividing the land from the first fruits of the entire land from the seven species which, which, which with, with which the land of Israel, Eretz Israel is blessed in a manner of you shall rejoice with all the good as the continuation and end of the passage together with ultimate peace and tranquility and likewise regarding the explanation of the content of these parshas in the service of man to his creator. Going out to war against your enemy alludes to the godly soul. Going out of its source above in the world of its silus, regarding which is written, the soul you have placed in me is pure to the descent below until this physical world, regarding which is written, you have created it. You have blown in it, guarded in me, and be, and be a vested in a body, an animalistic soul in order to refine them including the refinement of the world which this work is in the manner of war with the opponent your enemy and especially in the time of exile which due to the concealment of the darkness of exile the strength of the opposing side is even more difficult and as a result also necessary for strong of strong war to nullify it and when you will come to the land and Hashem your God gives you and you will inherit and settle in it alludes to the service in a matter of peace and tranquility at a time that the Jewish people are settled on their land including a state like in a time of Shlomo the complete opposite of when you will go out to war against your enemy as the service in the time of exile more and mainly the content of when you will come to the land and you will inherit and settle in it in the reading of the Torah which is eternal today it's related to also and mainly entering conquering and settling the Holy Land in the time to come in the true and complete redemption through Mashiach. And based on this, the difference between the Parshas of Ki Tzitze and Ki Savo, which we read today, is emphasized even more, even more, not merely two types of service in a warlike manner, in a manner of peace and tranquility that are different from one service to another, rather a general difference between the service and reward or Parshas Ki Tzitze, Tise, sorry, Ki Tise is connected to the steeds and service, including in the time of exile. And the Parshas of Ki Savo is connected to the reward of the time to come. And this is the emphasis also in the recitation and, and study of Perkei Avos, the first and second chapter on this Shabbos. At the beginning of the first chapter, Moshe received the Torah from Sinai and gave it over to each and every Jew and Jewish for all generations and established many students and emphasized 
the general efforts of the Jewish people in the fulfillment of the Torah, and at the end of the second chapter, and know that the reward for the righteous is in the time to come, emphasizes the aspect of the reward. And although effort and reward are different aspects, chapters, different times, as the word of our sages today, to toil in them and tomorrow to receive their reward, nevertheless we receive and study both of them, the chapter of effort and the chapter of reward on one Shabbos and in one resuscitation with no interruption between them, including as one chapter. And the point of the explanation is, that, is this, the beginning of Parshas Ki Savo, read after the continuation of the Parshas of Ki Tzitze, acts as an explanation of Ki Tzitze. Tzitze. Sorry, sorry, that also the service of war when you will go out to war against your enemy must be in a manner of peace and tranquility when you will come to the land and you will inherit and settle in it and furthermore that the general service of Ki Titse there is already a foretaste moreover a beginning of the reward of Ki Savo and in the word of the Mishnah of Kirkei Avos and know that the reward for the righteous is in the time to come when we may say that this means that the service itself is together and united with no, which is knowing is in a term of union and connection, the state of the reward for the righteous in the time to come, meaning that at the time of the service today to toil in them, there is a foretaste and a beginning of the reward of the time to come. And may we say that the ideas alluded to Parshas, Titze, Ki Titze, Ki itself, in which is written a command to pay a worker, pull, in a manner of pay him his reward wages that same day, and from this it's understood regarding Hashem, giving the reward wage for the Jewish service of the Jewish people, similar to an employer who hires workers, your employer will pay you for the work, as the rewarding of the mission and Perkei Avos of this Shabbos, that in addition to the reward of the righteous in the time to come, tomorrow to receive their reward, there must be, there is also the reward given on that same day. On that same very day, today to toil in them, give them his reward, as we shall explain. This will be understood by way of preference and explanation of the verse when you will go out to wage war with your enemy. And Rashi explains that the verse is speaking in an optional war in the service of man, based on the spoken above, that when you will go out to wage war with your enemy alludes to the general service of man in the world. What is the meaning of the verse is speaking of an optional war, that there is no command or obligation to go out to war, only that the Jewish people want to, for the going out to war of refining the body, the animalistic soul, and one's portion in the world is a command and obligation. And in connection with this, there is an additional question regarding reward for the service. Reward payment requires, or rather, reward payment applies to a worker that hires himself out to work for the employer for the payment, since if not for this choice, he would have no obligation to work for the employer, whereas regarding a service that the owner owns and must serve his master, there is no room for payment. And since the Jewish people are obligated to serve Hashem, also due to being a servant, as the verse says, the Jewish people are my servants, and even more than the obligation of a servant, since I was not created only to serve my creator. What is the concept of payment of reward for the service of a creator? Isn't the reward given for the work that is optional an optional war, and not for the work that is obligatory? And may we say the explanation of this based on a nuance in the wording, when you will go out to wage war with your enemy, go out specifically. The service of man in the world is a manner of going out, tise, from this, the true place to do the service, not only going out in relation to the portion of the soul in the world of Atsilus, the soul that you have placed in me is pure, as which is still a relative to this physical world, hence not going out in the complete sense, denoting a complete different domain, rather also and mainly in relation to its first and foremost source, higher than the entire Seder Hishtabalus including also higher than the beginning of the descent with the first contraction descent for the thought of the Jewish people preceded everything. And Hashem consulted with them regarding the creation of Seder Hishtavalis as the wording of our stages with whom did he consult with the souls of the righteous being that they are a portion of Hashem from high literally one existence with his 
blessed essence, Hashem and the Jewish people are completely one. And may we add this concept, it's alluded to also in what is written in the continuation of the Parsha, and Hashem your God did not want to listen to Bilam, for Hashem your God loves you, as explained in the Kutei Torah by the Balatanya, the Altar Rebbe, that Havaya Hashem is your God literally, and in every soul of the Jewish people there is similar to the name Havaya, or Yudke Vavke. Moreover, a radiance from the name of Havaya, literally, as the verse said, for his nation is part of Havaya, Yaakov, his inheritance, that they are all part and radiance of the name Havaya, literally, and not only the name Havaya as related to their creation, rather also the name Havaya as related to the Creator, and not only the four letters of his name Havaya, rather also the level of the point of the Yud, which is higher than the name of Havaya, including the level that is so high and concealed it is, not even alluded to in any letter or point at all, including the level of the essence of Hashem. And based on this, we may explain that when you will go out to war, refers to an optional war, meaning that the Jewish people are a portion of Havaya, the Jewish people and Hashem are completely one, they are completely above revelation to the existence of the world and the service in the world, and their descent to the world is a matter of going out, Titse, from true place as they are openly with one with Hashem. For the service refining the world is after Seder Hashadalas of the creation of the world was made with the consent of the Jewish people, so to say, with whom he consulted regarding creating the world. And therefore, their descent to the world and service in the world is like an optional war. In other words, as the existence of the Jewish people are created and in the world their service is a matter of an obligation, I was created to serve my creator. However, looking at their existence in essence, which transcends the world, as emphasized in the precision of the word titsei, titsei, that their creation in the world is after the exit from their true place, which is above Seder Hashtadalus, of the creation of the world, to the extent that they were consulted regarding the creation of the world, their work is, in essence, a matter of optional. The verse is speaking about an optional war. And based on this, the general concept of the payment of reward, which does not apply to work that is obligatory as the service of a servant for his master, will be understood, since from the perspective of the essence of the Jewish people that transcends the world, their descent to the world for the purpose of the service in refining the world is an option. And for more explanation of the concept of the payment of the reward for the service, we will preface first an explanation of the general concept of the service of when you will go out to war with your enemy. The leaving when you will go out of the soul from its true place of the Jewish people and Hashem are completely one to descend below and vest itself in a body in this physical world is because Hashem desired to have a dwelling for his blessed essence in the lowest realm. For although before the world was created, Hashem was clearly the sole existence and clearly filled this entire place where he created the world. Nevertheless, through the Hishtadalus of the worlds, there are descent from level to level. This literally physical and corporal world was created, which is lowest in the level which there is no lower than it regarded to the concealment of his blessed light. For so Hashem has desired that he gain pleasure when the evil inclination is subdued and darkness is transformed to light, namely that the revelation of the essence of Hashem shall be in the lowest realms. And therefore, in order that the accomplishment of the Jewish people in making the dwelling be in tune with the lowest realms, it is necessary for the soul to leave its true place in his blessed essence and descend below and vest itself in a body in the physical world as all the creations in the world where there is an existence of opponent, your enemy, and it is necessary to wage war with him a war. And in order that the service of the Jewish people accomplish a dwelling for essence of Hashem, not only for the level of godliness that is on the similar level to that of the world, rather a dwelling for the essence of Hashem, similar to the dwelling of a person in which his essence is truly revealed. It is necessary that their source be evident in their descent below when you will go out in present tense from their true place in the essence of Hashem. In other words, the innovation that descent of soul below accomplishes that also when it is an existence for itself is nevertheless one with the essence of Hashem has emphasized also in the fact that even in a low state a Jew cannot separate himself heaven forbid from the unity of Hashem and therefore through this is accomplished the innovation and also the lowest realms there shall be a dwelling for the essence of Hashem and may we say that this concept is alluded to also in the Parshas of Kisavo which we read in the continuation of Parshas Ki Tisei Ki Tisei 
when you will come to the land. And although the true place of the soul is above the world, land, nevertheless, not only does it leave there when you will go out, but rather furthermore that it comes when you will come and enters and vests itself in a body as found in the air, its land, an idiom of Aretz, material of, uh, sorry, Artsuis, Artsias, materialism, so that it's, its work in the refinement of the world shall be in a tune with the lowest realms. And though it becomes the land with the letter He prefix denoting a known one, the land of Israel, why was it called by the name Eretz land? Since Retzea wants to do the will of its greater. And furthermore, the land which gives Hashem and giving you whoever gives, gives generously for an inheritance that is evident in the land and is, is and that that it is evident in the land that it is the possession of the Jewish people and the manner of you will inherit and settle it, that it becomes the permanent place of the Jewish people, a place befitting the virtue of the Jewish people. For since they are one with the essence of Hashem, they accomplish in the land, the lowest realms, that it should be a dwelling place for the essence of Hashem. And emphasize yet more in the continuation of the Parsha, and you shall take from the first of the fruits of the land, the mitzvah of the current, that the, and that through the service of the Jewish people and refining the world, the true existence of the Jewish people is revealed in the world, that they are called the current first fruits. As it says, like a fig and the beginning of its ripening, I have received, I have perceived your forefathers, holy the Jewish people, to Hashem, the first of his crop, called so since they preceded everything, being that they are the one with the essence of Hashem, and therefore through them the land, the world, becomes a dwelling for the essence of Hashem. And befitting the content of service is also accomplished in the reward of service. The reward of a mitzvah is the mitzvah. The reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. After the Alter Rebbe explains that the ultimate purpose of the creation of the world is since Hashem desired to have a dwelling for his essence in the lowest realms, he continues, and it is known that the era of Mashiach, and especially when the dead will be resurrected, are ultimate purpose of the creation of this world, which is the reason it was created in the first place. And continues in the next chapter that the ultimate perfection of the era of Mashiach the resurrection of the dead, which is the revelation of Hashem's infinite light in this physical world, is dependent on our efforts that the service throughout the time of exile for the cause of the reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. For when it, do, when it is done, a person draws forth the revelation of Hashem's infinite light from above to below to be vested in the physicality of this world. In other words, the payment of the reward for the service of the content of the service itself, revelation of godliness in the world so that his Blessed essence will have a dwelling in the lowest realm. And based on this, we may explain the manner in which Hashem fills the commandments of on that same day, pay his wage. For since through his doing of each individual mitzvah, a revelation of Hashem's infinite light is drawn forth in the world. Hence, there is a payment of the reward. Not only every day on the same day, a mitzvah is done on that same day, pay his wage. Rather, also through each and every mitzvah, individually, in a specific matter a personal redemption or the like and furthermore and also important that also the main part of the reward that is the moment locked in a box is already in the possession of the worker each and every jew and jewish moreover is it is in his power to open the box and reveal the reward whenever he wants through adding one more mitzvah which through it he tips the scale the so to the side of merit for him and for the entire world which causes salvation for himself and them salvation of the true and complete redemption through Mashiach, which then in the era of Mashiach, and especially when the dead will be resurrected, the reward will be revealed. The revelation of Hashem's infinite light in this physical world, as the verse says, and the honor of Hashem will be revealed and all flesh shall see together. And in the addition to the receiving of the reward in the matter of on that same day, pay his wage, there is also the reward of the righteous in the time to come, tomorrow to receive their reward in the seventh millennium general reward for the efforts and service of the Jewish people throughout the generations of the 6,000 years that would exist, including the reward for the service of the Jewish people in the area of Mashiach, and especially when the dead are resurrected, all Jewish people of the previous generation, which specifically then will be there in the service of Torah study and mitzvah fulfillment at the height of perfection in Torah study, new Torah insights, which will be revealed by me, the revelation of the deeper aspects of the Torah, its secret reasons and hidden treasures and regarding mitzvah fulfillment in addition to the perfection of the fulfillment of the commandments 
also those that are dependent on entering the land, inherit to settling in the land, building of the base of Migdash, the mitzvah of the Bikarim, or first fruits, and additional perfection of the mitzvahs as you truly desire. In greater depth, not only is the reward immediate after the fulfillment of a mitzvah, rather there is even a foretaste of the beginning of the concept of the reward found in the service itself before it becomes time for the payment of the reward and for a specific service due to the obligation to pay his wage on that same day. Moreover, immediately at the beginning of the service, based on the above, the service and reward are one in essence that through the service of the Jewish people who are one with the essence of Hashem, they accomplish the revelation of the essence of Hashem in the world. Indeed, this pertains also to the state before the beginning of the service, before the creation. Since before the world was created, he was the sole existence and filled the whole place in which he created the whole world. Only that a most essential innovation was added, which for this reason the world was created, that through the service of the Jewish people in the world, who are one with the essence of Hashem, a revelation of the essence of Hashem is brought about in the world, a dwelling for his blessed essence in the lowest realms. And this phenomenon can and must be already at the beginning of the service, that the service of the Jewish people does not begin at the present state, after the creation of the world and the ascent of the soul into the world, rather the state of the future, the time to come, which is similar to the state of the past prior to the creation of the world, which for this purpose it was created in the first place, that the true essence of the Jewish people, namely that they are one with the essence of Hashem, as was openly manifested before they descended below, is clearly evident in them, and likewise it is evident in the world world that the state in which Hashem alone filled this entire place in which he created the world which through this it is easier to complete the intention of the creation throughout efforts and service to make a dwelling for Hashem in the lowest realms. Based on this we may also explain the order of the Parshas Ki Titse and Ki Savo an emphasis on them being read on the same Shabbos. The sequence of the Parshas allude to the fact that the service of when you will go out to wage war with your enemy which refers to our general efforts and service in the world and especially in the time of exile is done on a matter of you will come to inherit the land and immediately and you will inherit and settle it which refers to the true and complete redemption through Mashiach namely that also the service of war and refining the world is a matter of peace and tranquility since in the time of the service to day to toil in them it is evident that the Jewish people through them in the world the state before the creation which is as mentioned above a state of going out as well as at the state at the state of the time to come when you will come and therefore the service of war is with knowing that in truth it is not possible for an opponent to exist since the state of and since the state of all your enemy above your enemy and its purpose is Hashem your God will place him in your hands and furthermore you will capture his captives and his captors and these captors of your enemies, specifically, which allude to the 288 sparks of the world of Tohu, the source of your enemy that fell and were taken captive, his captives, in the physical things that are in this world, which through the service of the Jewish people, their refinement indeed, you will capture his captives, and they will, re and he, you will capture his captives that will, that we receive also the lights of Tohu, Asav, which is higher than the lights of Tikkun, Yaakov, as alluded to in what is written in the continuation of the Parsha, that the firstborn, firstborn boy will be born to dislike, to the disliked wife, that through the refinement of the opposing side dislike, we draw forth the lights of Tohu that precede firstborn, the lights of Tikkun. Moreover, the truth is revealed in the world that the Jewish people, Yaakov, Proceed Bakurim and are higher than the world of Tohu and before it Simsum as the state as the state before the creation of the world, only that it is drawn and revealed in the world. And furthermore, and also essential that the service is with peace and tranquility when you will come to the land and you will inherit and settle in it. In a literal sense, peace of the soul and body through the fact that Hashem gives each and every Jew all his needs physically and spiritually in a bountiful manner from his full, open, and holy, broad hand, first and foremost as a necessity for the service itself and not as a reward as the Rambam writes regarding the promise of the physical bounty in the Torah, that we were promised that we will, that he will remove from us all matters that hold us back from doing it, sickness, war, or hunger, and give us bountiful all good matters that assist us in fulfilling Torah, satiation, peace, and abundance of gold and silver. And in addition, also as payment of reward, which must be given in the time today to toil in them. On that same day, 
pay his wage, and not only in a spiritual war, including the revelation of Hashem's infinite life, rather also physical war as a foretaste, and similar to the physical reward in the era of Mashiach, as at that time there will not be any hunger or war, for the good will be very plentiful, and all the delicacies will be found as dust. Good and delicacies, good and delicacies also in the physical sense, as an outcome of the revelation of Hashem's infinite light in the world. And may we contend that above spoken to the content of the time in which these parshas are read is known that all aspects, uh, all special dates of the year have revelations to the specific parshas of the week in which they occur, namely in the month of Elul. The month of Elul is the last month of the entire year in which we make a righteous accounting of the service of the year in order to correct and complete all matters of service in Torah, prayer, and acts of kindness through the service of Shuvah, as alluded to in our parsha, and that she will cry for her father and mother for a month. And, that, and through this we reach the completeness of redemption as alluded to what is written in our Parsha and afterwards you shall come to her and have relations with her and she will be a wife for you meaning as it is written on that day you will call me my husband as the words of our sages in the era of Mashiach there will be a marriage, a true union of Hashem and the Jewish people as the verse says for the one that has relations with you makes you as well as the month of preparation for the beginning of the service of the coming year and based on this, we may say that in the month of Elul is emphasized both aspects of service and reward. That the beginning of the service of the coming year is after and also and in continuation to the complete service. Hence, about, hence also about the payment of the reward of the year that is about to pass. And this concept is alluded to also in the name of the Elul acronym of Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li. I am for my beloved and my beloved is for me. That in the beginning of the service in a manner of an arousal from below, I am for my beloved and then my beloved is for me. There is emphasized on the ultimate perfection of the entire service reward, the union of I and my beloved, the Jewish people and Hashem in a matter of marriage, that they will be one flesh. The Jewish people and Hashem are completely one, as emphasized in the culmination of the 40 days, which are alluded to in the four yuds at the end of the word, Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li, namely Yom Kippur, the day of his wedding, upon which the second set of tablets were given, including the complete marriage in the era of Mashiach. And note that the marriage is also an idiom for not of an aso, uplifting of the head, which Mashiach has this in matter about whom it is written he will be exalted the nasa and raised and raised up and truly great and through him the ultimate uplifting of the head of each and every jew and jewish is accomplished and especially through the spark of the level of mashiach in them the level of yechida yechida to unite with you the level of the soul which is united with hashem the one the only one of the world and a special emphasis is on the above in the month of elo the year of hey uh, uh, 5751 as uh, acronym as commanded both regarding the revelation and coming of Mashiach who is not so exalted exceedingly as well as regarding the Nasun Nasu of the Jewish people and Hashem in the era of Mashiach in the words of the Yalkut Shimon the year in which the King Mashiach will be revealed he stands on the roof of base of Megdash and says humble ones Higia Zaman Galuas the time of your redemption has arrived and since we find ourselves in the last month of the year it is not possible to heaven forbid delay the fulfillment of this promise and it should be for, and it must be fulfilled immediately including on this very Shabbos and simply that the month of Elul in the year of 5751 in the end of our efforts and services through the time of exile hence we receive immediately the reward of the era of Mashiach and the resurrection of the dead, including the reward of the seventh millennium, to the reward of the righteous in the time to come, only that it is in present day on this very day, on the same day pay his wage, and especially close to the end of it, at the time of Mashiach, and literally this moment. And in the month of Elul itself, today is the 14th of Elul. The 14th of Elul is the era of the day, ushering in at the beginning of the 15th of Elul, upon which the moon is full, alluding to the completeness of the Jewish people, who are similar to the moon, count by the moon, and are destined to be renewed like it. And especially since the renewal and completeness of the moon is through it receiving light from the sun, the concept of the union of the sun and the moon, similar to the concept of the marriage of Hashem, the sun alludes to Hashem and the Jewish people the moon. From the 14th of Elo and on, they should teach the laws of Sukkot. 
30 days before the holiday for since the month of Elul has only 29 days lacking the 30 days the 30 days before Sukkot begins on the 14th of Elul the beginning of the preparation for the time of our joy perfection of joy three times the word joy is mentioned regarding Sukkot connect to the godly revelation of Yom Kippur the day of his wedding when the union of Hashem and the Jewish people is accomplished and more specifically our joys in plural that the two joys unite and the joy from above to below Hashem will rejoice with his creations together with the joy from below to above rejoicing and the Jewish people with their maker which in this is emphasized the unification of the general service today to toil in them with the reward tomorrow to receive their reward since his creation is in the general phenomenon of today to toil in them and when the level of today to toil in them will reach perfection from it will develop that Hashem will rejoice with his creations and the joy of Hashem in the revelation of the innermost of Atik, which will be revealed in the time to come. And there is a special addition in our generation since Arab Shabbat, one who toils on Arab Shabbat shall eat on Shabbat. It is on the 13th, the numerical value of Echad, one of Elul, which is the wedding anniversary of my revered father-in-law, the Rebbe, leader of our generation. And before this, on the 4th, day of the week leading up to Shabbos the 11th of Elul the wedding anniversary of his father the Rabbi Rishab whose successor is his only son my revered father-in-law the Rebbe leader of our generation and after this in continuation this Motzi Shabbos the 15th of Elul the anniversary of the founding of the Yeshiva Ta Tamchei Ta Tamimim in the third day of the seventh days of rejoicing the marriage of my revered father-in-law the Rebbe leader of our generation who gave the suggestion to found the yeshiva and was appointed by his father to actually administer the yeshiva. Marriage for every Jew, even in a common, even a common individual, is connected to the marriage of the Jewish people of Hashem in the marriage of Mashiach, which for this reason we conclude the seven blessings of the marriage with the phenomenon of the redemption. Speedily it shall be heard in the cities of Yehuda and the streets of Jerusalem. And most certainly marriage of the leaders of the generation. The leader is everything, and especially the leaders of the Chabad movement who reveal the deeper aspects of the Torah in a way that it can be understood, including in a manner of spread your wellsprings outward, which through the master comes, referring to the King Mashiach. And with greater emphasis regarding the marriage of my revered father-in-law, the Rebbe, leader of our generation, which in continuation to it and together with it was founding the Ta Tamche Tamimim since the students of Yeshiva are called Tamimim since they study the Torah of Hashem. Tamima complete both the part dealing with the revealed world as well as the esoteric aspects of Torah. Moreover, that the study of the deeper aspects of the Torah is written with true comprehension as the study of topics in the revealed part of the Torah that the human intellect unites with the intellect of the deeper aspects of the Torah with an amazing unity of which there is no unity like it nor can be compared to it at all in physical realms including even that they will be one flesh in marriage is no comprehension comparison to it a foretaste in preparation for the state of the era of Mashiach when all the Jewish people will be truly wise and know the hidden manners and comprehend the knowledge of their creator and also and therefore they are called the soldiers of the house of David who are victorious over the state of the scoff the advancing four steps of Mashiach and accomplish the revelation of coming of Mashiach, the ascent of David, in a manner of blessed is Hashem forever, a man and a man, as the words of the verse of the culmination of the Psalm 89 of Tillich. And note that this period of time, which is described at the conclusion of this psalm, ended already after our efforts and service through the 40 years since the passing of my revered father in law, the Rebbe, leader of our generation, Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak, in 5710 or 1950, in which there was an additional and spreading of the wellsprings outward in the manner of Hashem gave you a heart to understand and ear, eyes to see and ears to hear and now we are in the era in which is related to the psalm of Sadiq 90 which concludes with the verse my may the pleasantness of Hashem our God be upon us and the work of our hands establish it that your divine presence shall dwell in the work of your hands which is the reward for all of our efforts and service among the instructions from the above explained regarding practical action action is the main thing publicize in every place that we are now at the end of a toiling and service of exile when you will wage war with your enemies and the beginning of the era of payment and reward the reward of the righteous when you will come to the land and you will inherit and settle it and according to the service must be done also in a manner that are related to the era of Mashiach beginning with studying Torah about Mashiach redemption and base Amigdash and more and mainly along with peace and tranquility joy and gladness of heart including also through arranging joyous for brangs 
especially in connection with the joy of wedding and seven days of joy, including the strengthening of the Jewish custom to make a meal for the poor, a foretaste in preparation for the fulfillment of the prophecy, then in the time to come our months will be filled with laughter, which in our generation that the leader of the generation, my revered father-in-law, the Rebbe, whose second name is Yitzhak, meaning laughter and joy, is the eighth leader, Az. Then equals eight for the Baal Shem Tov, the phenomenon of our months will be filled with laughter becomes not something in the future then, rather in the present test. Publicized in every place regarding the special mission of the Tam He Tamimim, in which is drawn and effects through the entire world in a manner of lamps to illuminate, in addition to the fact that every Jewish house must be a house of Torah prayer and acts of kindness as spoken many times, every house must also be similar to the yeshiva of Tam He Tamimim, also through studying and teaching of Hasidim is, in addition to Torah study in general, publicized in every place regarding the efforts and giving Sukkos necessary necessities for all those that need it 30 days before the holiday so that they will be able to prepare for the time of our joy with ease, joy and gladness of heart, and even before this regarding the necessity of Rosh Hashanah as the word of the verse, eating fatty foods and drink sweet drinks and send portions of food to those who do not have it. And may it be the will of Hashem that through speaking and taking good resolutions and all of the above, we merit immediately that Hashem give them, give each and every Jew and Jewish all they need from his full, open, and holy, and broad hand, and most certainly in the most important matter, the true and complete redemption through Mashiach, and in the words of the verse of the Parsha that we read at Mincha, when you will come to the land and you will inherit and settle in it, and immediately you will take from the first of the fruits of the land, and you will go to the this you will go to the place that Hashem your God will choose to make his name dwell there, including the conclusion of the Parsha message. Read Edit Mincha, look from your holy Look from your holy abode, from heaven, and bless your nation, the Jewish people, being beginning with the main blessing of the true and complete redemption through Mashiach, literally, immediately. Thank you for watching. Zaygazun Kol Tov.